Jeez. Okay, this is Nick Aguirre with the California Conservation Corps. We're here at Mount Tamapias at the Mountain Theater. I'm here with John Griffith. He's a supervisor, also known as a C1, at the California Conservation Corps. And I'm here to give him a few questions and interview him. Okay, so the first question for you is, did you plan to make this viral video that's streaming across the web right now? And if so, how did it feel after you realized it went viral? Well, we definitely didn't plan it. Like, um, I make a lot of videos, a lot of core, core videos. And that one wasn't even meant to be a core video. That was just, we were cleaning up the kitchen in the morning and um, getting ready to go to work and the music was on because you know that motivates you when the music's on and clean the kitchen. So we were, they were dancing and we've busted little moves back and forth before but they'd never seen me string it together and so I did it and their reaction was really cool. And um, so I showed them the video and they're like, you gotta upload that to, to YouTube. And I was like, no way, no one needs to see a fat cowboy dancing. So, um, but they talked to me and their mom, they <laughs> their moms to see it. So I uploaded it and um, Akima Price, who uh, works with um, a group that's creating uh, community environmental education guidelines that will eventually be presented to the EPA. She saw it and liked it for its cultural competency value and started showing it and it started getting a lot of hits. And um, then one day I went to work and it had 1,500 hits and I came home and it had 14,000 in a couple hours, 200,000. So I just kind of got blown away by how fast it was, it was building up and that video of all videos, you know, so. It was really cool, and I was I was really shocked after it happened. And then when I started getting calls from, you know, Good Morning America and Inside Edition and and, and, um, and Univision and Headline News and all this kind of stuff, it was really exciting, and it gave me an opportunity to shout out the things I love. So it it was. <laughs> And also, you shouted out to core programs and wildlife conservation and diver other diversity issues. Um, how come? Um, you know, our population is growing really fast, and so a lot of my concerns goes back to that. We're, we have this great planet, we have awesome communities, we have a lot of problems. So I think that now more than ever, it's a great time to join together to try to find solutions for some of those problems. And I believe that core programs are one of the solutions. I was in a core program when I was 18. I was actually in two. I was in California Conservation Corps and Ohio Civilian Conservation Corps. And, um, and they changed my life. I got my GED in the CCC. I got interested in um, ecology and the things that later turned into my bachelor's degree, which was in plant science and Latin American studies. And so I loved core programs. They saved me. I got off drugs and uh, I've used drugs as a teenager and really disappointed my parents. And so when I got into the core program, I got drug free and I started doing something honorable so my parents forgave me and I got a relationship with them again. So I think the core programs are part of the solution, even for people who weren't as like at risk as I was, um, who just want to go out and serve their community and make the environment um, you know, a healthy place to live and learn about it. I think core programs are excellent. For wildlife conservation, I've always been interested in wildlife and I feel like they don't have a voice to speak for themselves. And so I try to be that voice, and that's why I've written my book, uh, Total Magic Going Mad. You guys, please check it out. I donate all the profits to the California Conservation Corps Foundation to groups that promote um, ethnic and racial diversity within the conservation movement and to wildlife care centers who are it's wildlife hospitals staffed by volunteers, like super compassionate, passionate people. And um, so I donate all the proceeds to my book to, to them, and that's kind of my way of helping wildlife conservation teaching core members environmental education we make discoveries when we're not working and so like sometimes we'll find a salamander underneath the log or be on the trail or there'll be a bird nest above us and so it gives me a chance to help these youth connect to these things you know as we're working you know it's like on the spot environmental education and so they can bond with that because it's very very important as our population continues to grow that we um, plan for resilience we make our societies resilient and one of the ways by doing that is to keep ecosystems intact and keep environmental processes natural processes intact so that the neighbors the neighbors that we're loving love thy neighbor as yourself even the generational ones that come after us we can show them love by making sure that all these ecosystems all these 
things in nature that made us prosperous is there available for them so they can be prosperous. That's why I like wildlife conservation. That's why I like core programs. And I believe that we have to do these things together. And that's why I like diversity issues because the environmental movement isn't for wealthy white people. It's not for any one group. It's all of our concern. We all need to work together. Everybody needs to feel included in that. Everybody needs to be heard and equal in that. And, um, and we need to move forward in finding some more of these solutions. And that's why I like groups like Outdoor Afro and Center for Diversity and Environment because they're working on issues like that. And I think they're very important. Hey, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, shit! Yeah. Oh!